Alright, here's a movie I thought I would never watch, but I was an international flight and Concrete Utopia was on it. And this is South Korean's movie that they submitted to be an Oscar contender. Was it the right choice? Let's find out. Chase Liaki here with the Blue Futon reviewing Concrete Utopia. What's about? Pretty simple premise. There's one apartment building in South Korea that stayed afloat after a massive fucking earthquake. And now all of a sudden, who's going to be able to live in this apartment? Who are these people in this apartment? Is there something sinister with the person in charge? What is outside the wire? And who is going to survive in this chaotic thriller? So, do you like this film? It's a very interesting movie. So, this movie really focuses on the apartment standards in South Korea and how a lot of people in that country live in apartments, how there's lotteries for it, how people can live in it, and how there's not really a house culture. It is more of an apartment culture. And I found that very fascinating as a person who has lived in apartments and houses that apartments just don't do it for me. Yes, that you have a landlord to like, Fix things and it is cheaper overall. Because if your AC goes out, if you live in a home, seven thousand, ten thousand, landscaping, another couple grand, gutters fixed, another couple grand. So I understand that, but the freedom of doing what the hell you want in your house is pretty nice. But anyway, we're talking about the movie Concrete Utopia, and it's a fascinating character study of what people are willing to do in this you know apocalyptic landscape and. Will you lie to people? Will you try to survive? What are you willing to do? And I think it is a good character study. Not the greatest, a good one. I am kind of shocked that South Korea did decide to choose this as their movie to submit to the Oscars. It feels not like an Oscar movie. And that's unfortunate because I was thinking, oh shit, this is going to be kind of cray-cray. And there are some cray-cray moments, especially something that's at the very end with a pit. And you're like, oh, this movie's going there. But it feels like I've seen this multiple times with other South Korean apocalyptic or just survival movies, and this really doesn't do anything to raise the bar from anything I've ever seen. You can say, yes, the acting is pretty good. The overall premise of the movie is solid. The overall backstories are kind of weak. I do wish it focused on this earthquake. I understand why they didn't want to, but when the earthquake was happening and we did do the backstories, I thought that was some of the best parts of the film because it was intense. It was oh shit moments. And you just want to know how South Korea got here. And that you really don't get that. You just know there's an earthquake. Shit's going down. Period. End of subject. Which I understand why doing that. But I think this movie would have benefited from knowing what was occurring in the past. Or what happened to lead up to these days. And you really don't get that. Uh, I do think the overall message of the movie does work of who can we house and i do think there is a underlining message like of cabrini with immigration and how much people can actually be hold and what you're willing to do for other people because you are in a scenario where this is apocalyptic it is a dog eat dog world and who are you willing to trust and are you what is the stopping point i think that is a true question because how many people can you bring in before the barriers class, before the wall class, before it's just complete anarchy. And that's facts. It's like a lottery system because there is no way that apartment building can fit everyone with all the food, the water, the shelter. And that's just the facts of living, of where what is the stopping point. This movie does go that way. But I do feel like there is a lot of convoluted messaging going on with a lot of the characters, with a lot of the subplots that just didn't connect as well as I wanted it to do. There were some funny moments overall, and the tone of the movie did shift here and there, which I was like, hmm, I don't know if that's the right tone shift overall. And there is a message with the main couple. I wish it went a little bit further, but it didn't. I understand why it didn't, but there is something with these characters, which I'm going to call it greed. But I understand you want to be good, but there's a point in you are harming more than doing good. And people need to find that fine line of, yes, something might be fucked up, 
but you need to figure out the right way to fix the fuckery before the system collapses. And if the whole system collapses, you just fucked it up for everyone. So overall, Concrete Utopia is a well shot. It looks fantastic, especially the earthquake scenes. When it's on screen, it's great. I think there's a good overall message, but it is convoluted by a lot of subplots and character decisions that are very questionable. But it is a very good movie. But an Oscar-worthy movie? No. So I'm really curious why South Korea did choose this one. So Concrete Utopia will receive a 3.5 out of 5 futons, which equals at 70%. So see the critics news course gave this one. Critics a 100% with 54 of them. Shocking. Audience score a 77% with over 100. Critic consensus. Concrete Utopia uses its post-apocalyptic framework to pose questions regarding the drive for survival and intellectually probing darker corners of the human nature along the way. Sure. But I mean I gave it a positive too so mine would be in the hundreds but I thought there would be at least one negative. You have 100% with 54. That's bonkers. So 177 to 70. Chase Scott here with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. One of the things Blue Topia. You Blue Tony Snake and watch. Have a great day. And I don't care about your state tomorrow, week, now, month, or a year from now. I'm a freaking one of you. And damn, I was not expecting that 100.